let's go to the word of god father we thank you for your word we thank you for everything that you are accomplishing amongst this body of believers i thank you father that what you are doing in this place is something that is going to last for generations untold I just believe, Father, that by the power of your anointing, that you are about to set the captives free in a tremendous way. Lord, we love your word and we accept your word, but I'm asking, Father, that as your word is preached today, let there be healing in the hearts of your people. If there is any place in their personal lives that does not match up with the word of God, I am asking over the next 22 and a half minutes, let something come alive on the inside of this them let your word be like a counselor let your word be like a hammer let your word be like fire let your word be like water let your word be the saving grace for our lives we need your word man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God thank you for your word and we love it and we depend on it in Jesus name everybody shout amen, amen. all right write this down you're going to need to remember this. We are continuing in our series entitled Finish It. And I want you to write this phrase down. I'm going to get to my text probably towards the middle of the presentation. But I want you to be quite aware of this. Sin separates. Please write that down. Sin separates. Sin separates. Anytime that there is sin represented in the earth or in an individual, it comes with the purpose to separate you from God. Now, whether it's, it's good uh, inspirational conversation or not, the truth is that sin is what separates us from God. I need to make a startling announcement, and I'm just going to touch it and move on, and you can study it at your leisure. But I need to make sure that you understand that if you live in sin long enough, and you die in sin it is the separation from you and God forever there are two eternal destinations y'all ain't gonna say nothing on this one is the place where the streets are paved with gold and the river of life flows freely and the relationship with Jesus the Christ becomes even more elaborate and real to you it's a place called heaven and then there is another destination that was not created for you hell is the place that was created for all of the fallen angels and Lucifer to be able to uh, experience eternal punishment the thing that I really think is interesting is that sometimes we assume that hell is the place absence from God's presence but I beg to differ David said that if I make my bed in hell you'll be there I believe that hell is not the place absent from God's presence it is the place where his wrath is unyielding it is the place where you will experience another type of presence it's called the wrath of God because if you willfully stay in your sin after times of uh, uh, the gospel is preached to you and after moments of turning if you willfully accept sin here is what the Bible says sin is pleasurable for a season which means sin is not going to make you feel bad sin is always gonna make you feel good and I'm gonna move right through that the truth is the truth but most of us we fall in love with the pleasurable season of sin and then we overlook the consequences of sin the Bible says Tim that when sin is full grown that it then gives way to death the wages of sin is death look at your neighbor and say the wages of sin is death here comes the good shouting part but the gift of God is eternal life what we shout about the eternal life but we act like we are we become deaf when we talk about the wages of sin is death here is what it means sin pays you sin has a 401k plan sin has a retirement plan sin values and honors 20 year members amen sin will pay you but it's not the kind of paycheck that you think that it's going to be it's death look at your neighbor and say it's death now if you might be like Adam and Eve God said that the day that you surely eat of this tree you will surely die 
they kept breathing for a really long time but I want you to understand principally based that anytime you participate in sin something dies influence may die relationships may die places may die positions may die anything where you willfully participate in sin you run the risk of something dying now right now when y'all got these looks on y'all face like oh god something done died in my life i got good news for you but i want to make sure that we are clear about the condition of the world we live in this world has a sin sick condition and the only antidote is it's not therapy it's not counseling it's not self-help it's not reading more books it's not listening to r&b there is only one cure for sin his name is jesus now I just told you that there was only one cure for sin I said his name is Jesus and some of y'all are so unbothered because we have devalued the name of Jesus and we put it next to names like Sam and Oliver and Henry and Wilbur but look at your neighbor and say Jesus is greater than Wilbur y'all ain't gonna say nothing I said Jesus is greater than Wilbur that name is not like every other name so when you hear his name don't put it up to the context of all the other names that let you down come out of your feelings when I call his name everything changes look at your neighbor and just scream real ignorant Jesus in their face that wasn't ignorant enough throw your wig back and shout Jesus one of these days somebody gonna pull a wig smooth off and run around here with braids and I can't wait to see it I can't wait don't talk about him either gone sin separates it separates you from God it separates you from the presence of God it separates you from the heartbeat of God and and sin is something that we all must confront Adam and Eve made a decision everybody say a decision Adam and Eve made a decision Ness here is their decision God said I so value freedom that I'm going to give you the chance to choose against me now now right there you should have shouted because God is not trying to be to you what you thought your ex-boyfriend was and that's controlling God says I so value your freedom Adam and Eve and he's saying the same thing to you that I'm not going to although I have created this incredible place for you to live I'm gonna give you an option here is the option you can eat everything around this garden everything belongs to you in my love I am giving you a buffet of choices to choose from where the pleasure that you're looking for can be uh, through another level but what I don't want you to do look at your neighbor and say but what he don't want you to do but what I don't want you to do is do not touch this particular tree if you touch this tree you are going to die something is going to die this is God's way of saying I love you and I and I want to make sure that you don't love me just because I gave you stuff I want to make sure that you love me and that you even love the boundaries I put around things that you think are still good for you now I'm preaching way better than you saying amen because the truth is some of y'all are angry because God put a do not enter sign on something you really want to be a part of and you're begging and you're knocking and you're pleading on the door and you're begging and you're knocking and you're pleading on the door and you're trying to say Lord please let me into this and God says to you the answer is no have you grown enough in the maturity of your walk with God to dance on his nose like you dance on his yeses now the answer is no nobody dances when we scream about no you can't get it no you can't date him no you can't take her home no you can't drink it no you can't smoke you see right here how nobody is dancing but if i were to say man in the fifth row god's getting ready to give you a brand new house praise him right now all of y'all over here would say i want the house too you to get to shuffling but nobody dances when god says no and i'm not giving you an end date when i'll say yes 
I just want to know when my process going to be over. You, you know, this demand to know what the end is going to be, sometimes God takes you through process and reveals what's going on by each step of faith. But because we are spoiled, look at your neighbor and say, you spoiled. Amen. They ain't going to get mad at you. They're not going to swing. You, you, you spoil. And because you're spoiled, you want to know what step 52 looks like, not step number three. If I'm going to be walking with you, I want to know where we're going. And God told Abraham, get out of your mom and daddy house, and I'll tell you when you get there. We don't like the I'll tell you when you get there. I want to know now. Look at your neighbor and say, I want to know now. Now, if they said that to you, have the courage and scream no in their face. Sin separates. God gave Adam and Eve an opportunity to choose because he values your choice. Here is why. Real love is seen by the decisions you make. You can't just tell me you love me and then be unavailable every time I want to see you. You, you can't you can't tell me we're in relationship and then every time I text you, my text messages are green. And I, and I know your phone ain't off because you was just on Instagram. You tell, look at your neighbor and say, you tell on yourself. So what, what I'm suggesting is, is that action must match lip service. Look at your neighbor and say, action must match lip service. If you say you love me, then protect me. Never mind. If you say you got my back, don't stab it. If you say you're going to be with me, when I get a flat tire, pick me up. Look at your neighbor and say, pick me up. <laughs> so, so God tells Adam and Eve, I want to establish real love. between Real love. I'm, I don't know where that thing came. Searching for a real love. That thing like hit me right here. I don't ever know that part. Okay, come back. All right, in up. This is just, it's my fault. Lord, forgive me. It's my fault. I heard you, Lord. Lord said, don't rebuke them. It's your fault, fool. I said, okay, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. God says, I want to establish. I want to establish, I almost did it too. I want to establish real love. And the only way to see it is to give you a chance to choose somebody else. If you're dating, this is not for the married people. If you're dating, stop being upset when somebody that you're dating chooses someone else. Let them, listen, you are not Hitler. Stop putting people behind bars. I'm going to kill myself if you leave me. Then fam, you might die. Woman of God, don't you shave your head and talk about I'm the only reason why you got hair. You, you're going to go bald. At some, listen to me, if you've got to imprison them to make them stay, they're not really there. <laughs> Sorry. You may see a, a representation that makes you feel good, but as soon as you go to sleep, wow, the freaks come out at night. You sleep, and they slid right out your little prison door, uh, Paul and Silas style. Prison door. So, so you, can't, you can't imprison people with your restrictions of manipulation of if you love me, you would not. Now, here is the balance. If you are married, this does not apply to you. You cannot have multiple options. Look at your neighbor and say, if you're married, uh-uh. So because of this separation, this sin, sick condition, I needed to give you all of that as a foundation for where we're going. And I'm going to preach real quick, I promise. The, the, the separation because of sin is a choice man made against God's counsel. Against God's counsel. Something got in Eve's ear and misinterpreted God's statements to benefit her flesh. And based off of that conversation, her heart turned. Please be careful. The conversations that you listen to. Conversations that come across as 
uh, innocent have the potential to turn the heart. Here is what you don't need to forget. If you don't remember nothing else today, remember this. You are not exempt from your heart turning based on a conversation. I know you're not exempt because the gospel turns your heart. So you mean to tell me if Satan is a pervert, what's he going to use to turn your heart? A conversation. If God moves it with a conversation, Satan's going to attempt it as well. Eve listened, her heart turned, she made a decision to go against God, and sin separated mankind from God. Sin separated mankind from God. Fast forward many years later, and here comes a deliverer. The deliverer is Moses. I'm not going to give you all of the history of Moses' life, but you do clearly understand that Moses already has survived uh, floating on top of something that beneath it is something that could destroy him. Now, I'm, I'm using this in very plain terms because I want to paint a picture of 2019 for many of you in this room. Many of you floated on top of something and had no clue what the danger was lying beneath you. But because your life has destiny, none of the snakes and the crocodiles and none of the poisonous and venomous things underneath the water had the courage to try to attack what you were floating in. So although floating in a basket is not ideal, the basket was breakthrough for you. So he floats to the next level. He gets trained in Pharaoh's house. He's learning and all of these wonderful things. And he is now the representation of God's freedom for a people that has been crying for deliverance for over 400 years. Here comes Moses. And when Moses walks them through deliverance and he parts the Red Sea through the power of God, he finds himself in a peculiar situation. God says, come up to Mount Sinai. I want to have a talk with you. Because as it stands, I cannot come close to my people-ness because sin has separated us. And because sin has separated us, we need a middle ground. And Big Mo, that's going to be you. Come on up here, and I want to talk to you about something. Moses makes his journey up the mountain, right? And when Moses gets there, God starts to give him commandments. These commandments is the open door that if you will meet these commandments, it's going to give you the right for me not to smack you when you do something stupid. If you can meet up and live up to these commandments, I'm willing to come a little bit closer. Hear me. The commandments, the law that most, and there was more commandments that I'm just going to only touch these 10, but the law that God gave is very interesting because in my sin condition, stay with me don't go to sleep in my sin condition I cannot keep the commandments look at your neighbor and say neighbor you cannot keep the commandments in your sin condition you don't have the willpower to keep the commandments so the, so the law now becomes a curse to those not because the law is bad but because we're cursed we have sin and we cannot meet God's standard. Here is what God begins to whisper to Moses. Because these people cannot meet my standard, because they cannot keep the commandments, I want one high priest one time a year to take an innocent animal. Take that innocent animal into the presence of God, the Holy of Holies, and I want you to kill that animal. And we will make a substitution. I will see the innocent life as sacrifice for the guilty life. And there will be a swap. So because the animal has not committed sin and the human has when you sacrifice the animal I will allow the innocent blood that came from the animal to be given to the guilty human and I'll let there be a swap now you looking at me mighty churchy but I just gave you the antidote for why you're going to heaven Jesus was the lamb of God the innocent lamb and you are the guilty sinner when he died on the cross that blood became your substitution he who knew no sin be came sin which means and you know we say that he who knew no sin mm, became sin hallelujah but you know what let's be more specific he who knew no heroin became heroin 
Y'all don't like that because I'm making your, 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 uh, your picture, Jesus, not look so good. He who knew no crack became crack. He who knew no sexual indiscretion became a hoe. Don't you call my Jesus a hoe. I'm not calling him one. I'm saying he switched places with you. No, that should not offend you. See, the real people say, you know what? I can't even get mad because yesterday was a whole uh, twerk vision. It's the truth. It's the truth. He is perfect and he looks at you and says, man, you ain't going to never meet these standards. How about I become, I'm not going to do what you did, but how about I become what you did and then I'll let God, the Bible says, smack me with his fist. The Bible says God smote Jesus, not because he doesn't love his son, but because he saw you in 2015. You remember 2015, right? Okay. Elbow your neighbor and say, thank God for Jesus. <laughs> so he says, Mo, come on up here. I need to give you these commandments. It's going to make sense in a second. Exodus chapter 20. You can't have no other gods before me. We didn't keep that one. Because the, the people with these things have become our gods in 2019. Never mind. Let me move on. I won't make you mad. You can have no carved images before me. Y'all for real don't like this one. That carved image, I talked about it yesterday, but I don't know why I feel like I keep putting my foot on this thing. That little, can is it a cancer pig? Whatever your signs are that you follow in the newspaper, those representations are carved images. If you were in the Old Testament, they'd have broke your neck for that. I'm a Pisces, really? Come here. Why, pie? You ain't nothing now. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, thank God we ain't in the Old Testament. <laughs> Woo, this church would have uh, the babies in it only. <laughs> Here's another one. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. I'm not, I'm not going to bother y'all with your OMG text messages, but I'm going to move right on. Remember the Sabbath. Here's another big one. Honor your father and mother. I said, honor. <laughs> Don't murder. I ain't shot nobody. I'm talking about the gun in your mouth. How many bodies, you old serial killer, have you murdered and buried with your cutting edge tongue in a private chat? Here's the next one. No adultery. That's going to make sense in a second. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Look at your neighbor and say, stop lying. That's all that means. Stop lying. <laughs> Don't covet your neighbor's house. I'm sorry. I misread that. Don't cover your neighbor's Instagram. Here's what happens next. Exod that's Exodus 20. You can check me. It's in the word of God. Exodus 31 and 18 says, this is God's conclusion. Remember, sin separates. I want to come close, but they don't meet my standard. They don't meet my standard because they don't know it. Here's my standards, Mo. Come on up here. Let me tell you. Let me give you the substitutionary formula of what's going to happen when they don't meet my standard. All right, we're almost done talking, Moses. Exodus 31 and 18. And when he had made an end of speaking, this is talking about God, with him on Mount Sinai, he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone, pay attention, written with the finger of God. I got these two tablets of stone. I've got these commandments, these Ten Commandments. And I wrote them myself, Moses, with my finger. Remember that. Write that down. You need to remember that. God wrote the commandments with his finger. God wrote the commandments with his finger. Let's get to my text. John chapter 8, verse number 1. I got seven minutes. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early, everybody say early. Early in the morning, he came again into the temple. Jesus went to church. 
and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them you're supposed to learn at church can you just please put this in the fly leaf of your bible if you got a paper one and say i must learn something when i come to church if you well i'm already out here now if you visit attend a church where you don't learn anything fam that ain't the one for you never mind verse number three then the scribes and the pharisees pay attention this is going to bless you then the scribes and the pharisees brought him a woman caught in adultery now i told you sin separates i told you god wrote some commandments on a tablet of stone I told you that God wrote it with his own finger and I told you one of those commandments was do not commit adultery we see early in the morning everybody say early in the morning early in the morning here it comes the church people come to church early with a woman that was caught in the act of adultery they bring this woman because they understand the law. Let's keep reading. I wanted to make sure you got that. They, they understand the law and they say, teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. I mean, that's in the smooth, I mean, the Tootsie Roll. Hallelujah. That is in mid Tootsie. Okay. She was caught in the very act. Now, Moses, this is why I gave you the law. Moses in the law, we going somewhere, commanded us that such should be stoned what do you say about this woman they asked jesus this because they were testing him they had no compassion for the woman let's back that thing up juvenile style real quick how in the world did you catch this woman in adultery early in the morning if not one of you ninjas must have been standing right there with her think about it logically I don't know if mother came to the rendezvous at 5 a.m. I would like to suggest that it's probable that she spent the night somewhere. And I would also like to suggest through deductive reasoning that the only reason why that that married guy hooked up with her was possibly because he was a Pharisee trying to trap Jesus. How else do you find the woman of God early in the morning? You know what scares me? What scares me is gossipers that bring information before anybody else knows it. I'm talking, what's, ooh wait, y'all don't like that one. I'm talking about how you always know the tea earlier than everybody else. How in the world do you always know what everybody else is doing? Y'all don't like this message. We dress it up at times as religious concern when in all actuality your heart is poisonous not trying to condemn the woman but you're trying to X the individual out of the purpose of God. The Pharisees and the Sadducees said we need to stone this woman because we understand Moses' law. Moses' law says, you got to read the book of Leviticus, that if you get caught up in this particular trapped in the closet episode, <laughs> that they are supposed to take rocks, and they're supposed to take these rocks and throw them at you repetitively until your spirit leaves your body. Look at your neighbor and say, die. That's, that's what it means. We're supposed to stone you until you die, because according to the law, here it comes, that God wrote with his finger these are the consequences that you are supposed to experience let's keep reading and I'm done here's what it says now Moses law commanded us that such should be stoned but what do you say this is that this is their way of testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him Woo! be careful when people ask you set up questions to trap you this is how i know y'all ain't got no discernment you nosy because if you had discernment some questions you wouldn't even respond to 
because you'll be able to say, nah, you being messy right here. About face, bah, I'm out of here. Look at, y'all ain't got no time. I wish you could just work on your turn and I'm out of here. That the next time somebody bring me something to try, did you hear what uh, uh, brother uh, Speed Bump has said? Fair, I don't even know Mr. Speed Bump. Don't bring me Speed Bump's stuff. Nah, you ain't gonna say that because you like hearing who ran over speed bump again? Oh, wait, speed bump. What I'm trying to do is change your taste buds that you would come out of that demonic tea and fall in love with his blood. All right, let's keep reading. Watch this. We, we supposed to stone her, Jesus. What you say? Since you always want to save everybody, and since you say that, that, that you come from God, well, God wrote this moment for us with his finger. This thing blessed me. I don't know what it's going to do to you. Verse 6. But Jesus stooped down and wrote something I said, Jesus stooped down and wrote something with his finger. Now, I'm not trying to suggest to you what Jesus wrote. All I know is that Colossians told me and the book of Hebrews told me that the Old Testament is nothing more than a shadow of better things to come. Woohoo! And when Jesus stooped down and wrote something in the sand, it was his way of finishing God's sentence from the Old Testament. Look at your neighbor and say, the title of this message is my finger is in his future. That everything I touch that was deadly to me, my future is secure in the hands of God. Now this is hard for you to say man on because you're sitting next to Pharisees and Sanchez but look at your neighbor in the face and say neighbor I don't care what you know about me my story's not over yet spread my business talk about me bad but God is still writing I said lay your hands on your own belly and say please be patient with me I said God is not through with me yet you might see me with my clothes off but Jesus is still writing take eight seconds without you feeling all warm and fuzzy and no goose pimples and if you're glad that Jesus kept writing where your soul tie left off take ten seconds and praise him God wrote something on tablets of stone, but he knew. Jesus says, M Moses prophesied that there will come a prophet greater than me one day. Jesus comes and he says, you all worshiped your, with your fathers on this mountain, but there is coming a day when those that worship me will worship in spirit and in truth. The Bible says, the day you hear my voice, harden, look at your neighbor say harden, harden not your heart, right? I'm going somewhere, hang with me Tim, harden not your heart. What did David say? Ken, create in me a clean heart. Can you see the swappings of the hearts, Antonio? One is a heart of stone, the other is a heart of flesh. Woo. Do you don't understand that when sand goes through a certain kind of process it turns into a rock and Jesus is saying I know God saw you when you were hardened in sin but let me write in the dirt what were you made from I want to throw everything up here I said what were you made from I was made from glitter and gold the devil is a liar you were formed from the dust of the ground and when Jesus stooped over and wrote something in the dust I don't know what he said all I know Lance he's the fulfillment of everything God started in the Old Testament let me let me come down because 
in the Old Testament, you had to go up to get God's finger. When Jesus comes, he said, fam, you ain't going up the rough side of the mountain. Now, I know you're doing the best you can. Don't go up the rough side of the mountain. Moses already did that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come down to where you are. In the mess of your dysfunction, in spite of who's trying to expose you, in spite of who's trying to embarrass you, they brought that woman bare, which means that she, she could not cover her own shame. And Jesus says, y'all do me a favor and I'm closing. This is it, I promise. I hope you love Revelation because I'm about to smack you with it. Jesus says, all right, here's what we're going to do. After I'm done writing in the Bible because I got to finish my daddy's sentence. He started it back in Exodus and I got to keep writing this thing because you ninjas tried to bring me the law because you want this woman to be destroyed for something you probably participated in the bible says that the pharisees and the sadducees had a conscience issue which means that it might have been conclusive that maybe they was dabbling in something in the dark that was similar but because nobody caught them nobody knew what they was doing i get to that next week but jesus said how about this let the first one that has no sin cast the first stone he said i'm gonna wait for you cast the first stone now you all look at that like it's retribution for the woman you missed it he is trying to give the accusers a picture of who he is I'm gonna show you let the first one Elder Debbie that has no sin you cast the first stone right entry level somewhat rookie ish preaching says but the Pharisees knew they had no sin <laughs> and Jesus knew that he was sinless yeah and they all dropped it because Jesus had no sin true I'd like you to look a little deeper Jesus testifies of himself Calvin I am the chief cornerstone that the builders rejected he understands that I'll need you to cast the first stone, but you keep rejecting me. Here is the first stone. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The first stone is not in the Pharisees and Sadducees' hand. This woman needs to be stoned. And this woman is going to get stoned. But the Bible says that I would rather fall on the rock Woo! before that thing has to fall on me. And Jesus is saying, I wish you all could see grace. Cast the first stone. And he says, because none of you have spotless hands, let he that has no sin cast the first stone. And Jesus said, lady, it's your lucky day. I am about to throw my grace on you in such a way until it kills you. Jesus fulfills the law, right? He didn't come to do away with it. Read your Bible. He came to fulfill the law. So lady, you're going to die, all right? But you ain't going to die like you think they think you're going to die. They're trying to bury you because they want your reputation to be marred. They're trying to destroy you so you don't ever get to do nothing in here ever again. They're trying to bury you because they don't like your proximity close to me. Can I encourage you that this woman can't commit adultery by herself? I'm going to say it real slow. You can't commit adultery on your own. If you're doing that, you're going to go blind. Amen. I'm not going to touch that either. Hallelujah. But you can't commit adultery by yourself which means that there is another participant that does not get to come close to Jesus hear me whenever you feel like you have fallen away from grace you need to rejoice you ain't fall away from it you fell into it so don't allow the accusations of other people to make you feel bad baby that lady although I was caught in adultery at least I got closer to Jesus after my mistake isn't it funny the one who made a mistake gets closer to Jesus and the accusers that want her to die move further away. You missed it because the Bible says the Pharisees and the Sadducees dropped their rocks and left his presence. They left Jesus. Whereas the one who got in trouble that everybody wanted to talk about at the first service early in the morning, it was a Sunday at church. 
the one that they want to talk about at the 7 a.m. service, that one, although you meant to embarrass me and bring me harm, it made me get closer to Jesus. Watch this. I want to make sure that I am integral to the text. Catch this. Jesus says, after they all drop their rocks, they all leave, their conscience bothered them. They drop their rocks, they leave. Jesus is the rock. The woman got stoned. I'm going to tell you how she died. Lady, your sins are forgiven you. Go, sin no more. Where is the death, pastor? In the go and sin no more. I'm going to stone that adultery to death. But you're missing it. You want accusation. You want to be walked in front of the church and say, oh, God, I'm pregnant. Can I tell you, I ain't going to never do that. Never. Sorry. Here is how he killed that woman. The Bible says, here it comes. When you die and you get buried, something covers you, right? Dirt. It gets buried, it covers you. The Bible says, love covers A multitude. Oh, so Jesus killed that lady, all right. He came for the adulterous side of her. Go, you're forgiven. Let's bury that. I'm turning away from it. I'm not going to bring it up anymore. You can give me the goodbye strings and music. You're forgiven. I'm not going to bring that up any longer. It's over. But here's what you have to do. There is a part you have to play. Don't ever again have somebody bring you before me butt naked again. Oh, I know you was ready to shout over, yeah, get them talking about me. There is a responsibility to grace. Here's your responsibility. Go! Not stay. Not stay in contact. Not call once a year. You doing all right? No, I'm not. Get away from me. There has to be a go and sin no more because you might leave that predicament and find another one with a different bodysuit. So when hell brings you the same situation again, just in a different face or a different cup or a different joint or whatever your vice is or a different turkey, amen? Because we love to kill the whoremonger but say nothing to the gluttonous cheeseburger eater at 2 a.m. Come on, let's not have preferential treatment for sinners. You know, you're doing the, uh, the crack. Fam, you're doing the ice cream. We love, I love categories. Worst, bad, ugly, nasty. How about all of it, death? Go and sin no more. Which means turn your back on whatever it is that I saved you from. And never walk in that direction again. I just want to be friends with it. Can I tell you that you can't be friends with what almost killed you in a previous season? And I'm going to help you. It's not my opinion. Get mad at the Bible. Don't send me no DMs. Get mad at the Bible. The Bible says that if a devil gets cast out of a house, that guy is coming back with seven other devils stronger than him because you want to be friends. I can handle it. I can control it. I got, really, that is so prideful. It's pride. It's pride because you are longing for a community that God snatched you out of. And I get it, you're lonely. You got to rebuild in a healthier route. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Amen. My future is in his finger. My future is in his finger. God wrote something and Jesus said, I'll finish the sentence. I know sin separates. I know they got in trouble but I'll finish it. I am the finishing move of God. I am the period of God. I am the exclamation point of God. When I come, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. 
I came to bring you abundant life. Lady, you got caught up? Dude, you got caught up? It don't matter. Don't focus on your accusers. If you'll see it right, your accusers are the ones ushering you closer to Jesus. We need to be more like that woman. Not once does she stand and turn and fight the accusers. She says, take me to him. Fine, whatever. Maybe he'll understand where I'm at. Hear me. If nobody understands what you've been through, stop crying. Stop being so angry. Fall into the arms of Jesus. The Lord told me while I was in Canada, he said, Brandon, do not mistake the power of my love. My love has transformative power. Never mistake that my love can heal and cover whatever heart issues that the people are dealing with. I have felt like that maybe there needed to be a different expression and that the love of God was elementary. But if you assume the love of God is elementary, you will miss your greatest deliverance. There is power in those incredible three words. I love you. Woo! Even just saying it, I can feel the fire of God coming on me. I love you. But because we want our solutions to come on a different plate we hear i love you as a glossing over of a real issue honey the issue is you need the love of god you cannot outgrow the love of god that's how people get religious and that's how we start looking at homosexuals like they're not humans don't get mad now if you had the love of god you would not look at a person based on their condition you'd see them like i want to break everything up here you'd see them like god does you ain't gonna convince me to stop loving get mad leave i get it bye i see you in heaven i will never Stop using the weapon of love. Never. It is the only antidote. Don't you see that people are in sin? Absolutely. You want to know why they keep coming? Because they can feel the love in here. Don't you run them out. Do something about them. How about we do something about you? Fix them. Teach them. Smack them. Everything but love them. The love of God will overcome and undo and create the necessary strength to walk in the steps of God. Hey lady, go sin no more. Go sin no more. How can I go and sin no more? Because you loved me so much, you pulled me out of my dysfunction. This next few seconds here is only for the worshipers. Don't leave. Maybe this worship will bleed into you and you'll, you'll worship in your car. But if you know that it took the love of God to save you. Now, I'm, I'm telling you now, the, the bitter people and the angry people that are still waiting on God to do something bigger than the love of God and waiting on you, just do something else. I just, just wanted to be different. Amen. Sit right there and don't do nothing. But those of us that know, if you don't ever give me another friend, if you don't ever give me another position, if you don't ever give me another microphone, if you don't ever give me another car your love and kindness whoa i was messed up man i was a liar a cheater i was angry i was so mad but his love came love lifted me whoa when nothing else love whoa. i said love love you can love somebody into corrective behavior people get in my ear all the time don't you see oh watch out don't you see of course I do but I'm so blinded by love and if that's my fault then judge me but I am so full of love I just am crazy enough to believe that I can love you out of what you're in I know you don't like that because you want consequences and law and stone them. I'm going to love them. And we will grow more with love than I ever will with beating of a rod. I'm telling you what I know. 
three powerful words that I want you to prophesy. You got to do it like Jesus did. You got to finish it with your finger. I want you to walk up to three or four people and just look them in the face. And they're going to act like it's, oh, that wasn't deep. Who cares? Be obedient. Walk up to them, point in their face and say, I love you. I love you. I love you. Now, don't poke them in the eye. Also, Brooke, that was close. <laughs> Come on, tell them I love you. I love you. Don't high five. Don't hug. I said point in their face. That's what Jesus did. Point at them and say, I love you. Come on, tell them I love you. I need you to hear this as God's affirmation to you. I love you and I'm finishing your dysfunction. I love you. I love you. I love. Come on, we dance, we run, we do all that together. Why don't you walk up to somebody and say, I love you. I love you. I love you. That just ain't strong enough for me. Man, please. There is nothing stronger than the love of God. Nothing strong. Everybody standing. I'm done. You say, Pastor Brandon. Well, let's do this. Close your eyes. Man, there's so much freedom taking place. There's so much freedom taking place. Close your eyes. Repeat after me, Lord Jesus. Come on, say, Lord Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Lord Jesus, thank you that when I was messed up and I was lying about being messed up, trying to impress and trick people, thank you that you loved me in the messiest season of my life. That thing gonna hit you in a minute, at least the honest people. In the messiest season of your life, you are still here because he's madly in love with you. He's not angry. He's not trying to get even. He loves you. He loves you. Lift those hands. He loves us. You know that? Oh, how he loves us. Yay! Here comes the flood. Ah, yeah, yeah. I need some unashamed worshipers. Meet me at this altar. I only need the people that are messed up. The perfect people stay in your seat and watch us worship. But if you know he had to love you through some stuff, get to this altar. Come on, hurry up. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. There's plenty of room in the middle. Come on. I need some attendance. Help me. Come on, we're trying to get to the altar. Come on. Come on, worship him because he loves you. Worship him and he's going to finish some stuff.
look at me. Look at me. There is nothing you can do that is going to make God love you more than he does right now. There is nothing you can do that is going to make God love you less than what he does right now. He loves you when you're good. He loves you when you're bad. He loves you when you're right. He loves you when you're wrong. He loves you when you're consistent. He loves you when you're inconsistent. The blood of Jesus opened up an opportunity for us to experience how God loves his son. When you say yes to Jesus, you become drenched in his blood. When you are drenched in his blood, you take on his DNA. So now when God looks at you, he sees his son. Name me one time where God was mad at his son. If God's not mad at Jesus, then he's not mad at you. When you accept him, you get what God said to Jesus after he was baptized. This is my son in whom I am well pleased. What did Jesus do? Nothing. He was just being a son. You have more acceptance than what your mind baptized in societal standards is letting you see. The love of God. The love of God on the inside of the right individual looks at you and says, I love you, can break so many bondages and yokes off of your life. Because when you hear, I love you, don't just listen for human vocal cords. Every time you hear it from somebody that loves Jesus like you do, you need to hear God saying it to you. So never discount the words of I love you. Every time you hear it, it will heal your soul. Put your hand on the person's shoulder next to you. Father, I thank you that the love of God is breaking bondages right now. Father, I thank you that the love of God is shattering soul ties right now. Lord, I thank you that the love of God is punishing condemnation right now. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. So Father, I thank you that there is no mistake big enough to murder the love you have for us. Lord, we freely receive in faith that you love us no matter if our natural father loves us no matter if our bff still love us no matter what people's representation of love is we will never mistake your love for us and we'll never do it and we'll love you back for the rest of our lives if you believe the love of god just saved your life take eight seconds and thank your god for his love come on